Hi ladies, it's Claire. Welcome to tutorial six of the Joanna Basford Magical Jungle Colouring Book page. Um, as you can see, I'm zoomed out quite far today because I need you to see the whole page. Uh, I want to tell you what I've done and then I do need to, because we're doing the tree today, I need to, I need you to see the, the full length of the tree over in this corner that I've drawn in. So you can see that since the end of tutorial five, I've completed the rest of my leaves. And I just wanted to quickly take you through um, what I've done. Um, as I said, I've done, I've done this, I haven't taped myself doing it because it's techniques that we've used before in previous lessons. So let me take you through what I've done. So you can see I've done these little leaves along the bottom here. So these little flowers here, because they're so small, I chose to use gel pen. Now this is just um, alternating red and yellow glitter gel pen. Then the um, frondy leaves across here, I've literally just blended two colours of green. I've got lime peel for the highlights at the top and then the bottom I just blended in some Prussian green. Again, don't worry about writing these down as I'm reading out the colours because I will list them on both the Facebook and YouTube tutorials. So, so don't worry about keep having to rewind to, to, to write down the colours. I, I will write them down for you on the posts. And then again here I filled these little leaves in and I've just used the um, same colours, same colour scheme that I used for these tall leaves here. Um, I haven't used a blue though, have I worth them being small. So from top to bottom I've just blended, straightforward blending, light green, true green and light aqua at the bottom. Okay, so that was that section there. Then what I've done is, um, on this right hand side you'll see I've completed these two leaves here. Uh, what I've done is used the wet look effect from video two, from tutorial two, but what I've done is used slightly different colours um, and you can see it works really well. So this technique doesn't have to be in, in any particular uh, colour scheme. You can really use it in anything as long as your out outline is a much darker colour than the inside so that when you stroke blend across the lighter section it just gives you the leafy effect. So um, I've got yellow chartreuse in the middle then I've got spring green for the next layer and then what I've got is grass green around this inside of the segment. What I've got outside as an outline is actually just green glitter pen but this shade here that you can just see on the, out on the outside of those segments is grass green and that's what I've stroke blended across to make those uh, leaf vein effects. Again, I've um, coloured in these leaves down here, the purple ones. Now what I've done is, I've literally just block coloured those. I haven't blended these, I've just used four shades of purple for the different, for the different um, segments. Just to show you that you don't have to do anything clever to, to make a really nice effect. As, you know, if you're picking lovely colours, they'll do the job for you. So um, again, what I've used here is uh, lavender, lilac, palmer violet, and violet at the very bottom and again just use the same green glitter gel pen just to highlight the, um, the, the veins of the leaves there on the outside and down the middle. What I've done here is, again I've used the green glitter gel pen but I've blended some really nice oranges and reds in the same way that we did in tutorial one for these flame shaped flowers. Only I've taken it to a slightly deeper red because on the colour wheel red um, attracts green and because I knew these leaves are green here it just makes it really nice and deep as it goes into the undergrowth so it's going into shadow but it's also going into colours that it matches. So again just quickly I've got canary yellow, sunburst orange, Spanish orange, yellowed orange, orange pale vermilion, poppy red, permanent red, scarlet lake, crimson red, um, yeah, sorry, the crimson red is the one at the bottom, is the one at the bottom. So, um, I've, and as I say, I've also used the green glitter pen on the outside of that. Now, because I've used quite a lot of green glitter gel pen, what I did again was, because I'm right-handed, work from, I, I coloured all of the leaves in first in pencil and then worked from left to right with my gel pen, going over the various outlines, um, so as not to smudge my work, because gel pen doesn't dry instantly. Again, so just I'm going across the page instead of doing this and smudging as I'm going this way. So that was just a little reminder. 
this very back leaf here because it's right at the back and it's kind of a little bit in shadow I've just used the same colours as we used here for the back leaves which is a very straightforward blend of two colours which is grass green and peacock green now I think the only other thing that I've pre-coloured that I had to show you with techniques that we've um, that we've already used and it, to be fair this isn't really a technique you can see I've I've coloured in the butterfly and the reason I've done this and not put it on the tutorial was it because it's just block colours and to be fair you can pick any colour you like what I've chosen is you can see them out over here because I wanted it to stand out quite well um, I've used um, these are Stedler Tri Plus Fine Liners and you can see that these two colours here are neons. I've got neon pink and neon orange. And I've just used the pink on the inside of those um, wings there. And then highlighted these tiny bits with the neon orange. And then what I've got is a lovely shade of mauve and a lovely shade of uh, magenta. Now they don't have colour tones on these. So this is why I'm showing you the colours so that you can pick something similar if you wanted to do something similar to mine. Um, or again, feel free to just pick your own colours for the butterfly, it's just block colour in felt pen, nothing too hard. So what I wanted to do as the tutorial today is have a look at how to do a tree and what you can see is I've just started to to outline the colours that I'm gonna that I'm gonna begin with and the reason that I've done that is because I was trying to understand in my mind where I wanted the light to come from because what we're going to do is we're going to shade the tree from light to dark um, according to light source so what I've chosen to do in my mind is um, think of this sun up here somewhere in this in this kind of top right corner or at least on the right hand side of the page so therefore the sunlight is coming this way and therefore will hit the tree there and therefore the colours on this side of the tree you will want to be lighter as a highlight because that was what that is where the light source will hit so you can see I've got the colours out here I'll just put my pencil down I've got the colours out here so again don't worry about writing them down I'll, I'll put them in the descriptions we have lime peel artichoke green ochre dark brown sepia and you can see I've actually got my black pencil out there which I'll show you what we do with at the very end to make a bark effect and then I've got my blender pencil out. So let's start the tutorial. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the first two of these colors, which is the lime peel and artichoke. And you can see um, from previous tutorials where we drew ourselves a tree line in here. And I also kind of made it a bit more interesting by putting a, a tree branch coming off there. So again, you've got to take that into account when you're, when you're um, planning your shading around the light source. So I've got my lime peel and because this is the lightest part where the sunshine would hit the most and I know this is a bit strange colouring a tree in green but you'll you'll get it by the time we do the end and plus in my mind the jungle is hot it's humid so you know there'd be moss sticking to trees that's quite a nice mossy colour so again it just works quite well with the theme of the picture so going back to our um, straightforward blending technique in terms of how we've done the sky and the ocean I'm just going to do a very light hand strip all in line peel all the way down and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to about there I'm going to take it to about where the roots of the tree start coming out that I've drawn in and the reason that I'm going to do that is because when I get to the bottom of the tree I'm not going to shade it straight across I want the bottom of the tree to be darker as a whole you'll see when we get there I promise so then I'm going to lightly just colour this strip in and I'm still using the lime peel I'm not pressing very hard at all at this point point. and you'll probably see that because there's not a lot of colour coming off the pencil okay and then right kind of between on the edge of this tree line I'm going to leave myself that strip of lighter hand but then go over in a much firmer touch on this very right hand side like that and leave that strip of with less colour on just being careful of the Okapi's nose again you don't have to worry too much because he's going to be dark brown I think I mentioned in pre previous tutorial he's going to be dark brown and black so 
even if you go over his nose a little bit, don't worry about it too much. You can either rub it out or it'll get coloured over. Okay, so that's my lime peel colour. I'm taking it onto the branch there and following it with the rest of the tree up here. What I should have mentioned probably is that I've left my outline of the tree. I drew it in pencil and I've chosen not to go over it in um, black Stedler pigment liner because I want the tree to blend quite naturally into the background. So please feel free if you wanted to, um, if you thought you wanted a, a bolder line down here, by all means just use your ruler and go over it with a, pig, a Stedler pigment liner. And then you can rub out that um, pencil line that's underneath without smudging it. But I'm, I'm gonna choose to leave mine in pencil um, just because it makes it a bit less of a, a bold statement. So I'm gonna take my artichoke colour and you can see I've started to mark out where I want this artichoke shade to be. So I'm just gonna take that down to there and again, just tailor it off very slightly at the base, like that. And then I'm gonna gently, and you can see it's a little bit tougher when you get to the top of the page, but just put your finger and you can hold the page down while you shade. And I'm just gonna lightly, this is all light touch, Just put a little bit of colour in these strips. And I'm going to go over the light strip of the lime peel colour a little bit as well, but not firmly at this point. Now, if you feel that you want your book at 90 degrees to do this and you're more comfortable in doing big sweeps with your book at that angle, please feel free to do so. I would usually do that, but the reason I'm doing it like this today is because it's easier for you to see the whole tree and I want you to see the whole shot. Whereas if I'm working that way, it's, it's harder. I've been practicing with the camera and it's harder for you to see. So I'm taking one for the team girls. I'm, I'm doing colouring this in the hard way, but it means that you can see everything that I want you to see. Here we go. So this is, remember, this is the artichoke colour. I'm just being careful of those little tiny lovely flowers like that then what I'm going to do is do myself a firmer strip so I'm going to leave that strip there which is in the lighter touch and then I'm just going to make that curve there because clearly it would be going into the branch up there again think about the shape of the of the of the object that you're coloring as you go um, so I'm sweeping curves around here because clearly that branch would be coming out at that angle from the tree. Now I'm going to press quite a lot harder and I'm going to go over the line peel as well slightly. And you can see I'm pressing harder because there's more colour coming off the pencil. Like that. And you can see already it's a lovely kind of jungle tree colour. And I'm just going to do the same all the way down. Apologies if this gets a little bit repetitive because the tree is clearly the size of the page. But I wanted to show you how I did all of it because I need to show you the curves of, of how you're colouring as well as the, the, the actual full length of the trunk. And you can probably hear that I'm pressing quite a lot harder as well. Just going over onto that line peel slightly and leaving myself a strip. Minding Mr. Okapi's nose. And as I say, if you do go over a little bit, which I have there, you can just rub it out. But don't worry too much because he'll get coloured in tomorrow. Well, he will if I have a practice and I'm happy with him. I think I will be. I think I know what I want to do with him. I have some ideas, put it like that. There we go. Dead easy. just gonna again just firm hand this little tiny detail down here is still leaving myself a little strip there okay then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my line peel and just blend over this color variation and you can see 
that because I've imagined the light source coming from here and it's hitting it's just giving that really nice highlight where the tree would sit in the sunshine I will be doing some tutorials on light sources and um, sunsets in the coming weeks um, which I'll show you how to really start thinking about where the light's coming from and making those decisions before you even start a piece because it really can affect the way that you colour the whole thing. So I'm just going back to my artichoke and I'm just going to go over the, the pieces where I've used a heavy hand and just smooth it out a little bit. Again, you can use your blender pencil till your heart's content, but I'm not going to do that here just for expediency's sake. Okay, so I can put my lime peel to one side now. I think I've just about finished with that. And I'm going to go to my next colour, which is green ochre. And I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to mark myself out a little line. Again, following, thinking about the curve of the tree. The curve of the branch coming out of the tree and how that colour would play. Coming out of this side. And it can be as rough as you like because you're not pressing very hard. You're just... Um, sketching it out and again because I want the bottom part of this tree to be darker and plus the tree roots come out in an angle this way I'm angling my shading over there a little bit okay so remember we're on green ochre exactly the same I'm going to go over it in a light hand and it'll look rough when you do it at this stage but don't worry about that I'm just going to fill in this whole strip with a very light colour. And it's best if you do that because you can, as I say, it's the easiest way to blend well, but it's also, um, it's easier to add colour than it is to take away. Pencils are quite forgiving with that because you can erase them, but having used watercolours and things where you, it's harder to take stuff off the page, I get into the habit of trying to add more as I go along rather than being heavy handed to start with and ending up having to take colour off, which I've done plenty in the past. You learn, we all learn by our mistakes, especially with watercolours. I will be trying to do some watercolour tutorials as well, watercolour pencil tutorials. So keep your eye out for those in the next couple of months. Okay? Back to artichoke. The line in between where these two colours are, I am now going to go over in a slightly heavier hand, not massively heavy but just to pull this colour into the slightly darker green ochre, just give myself a little strip like that. And I've seen um, people where they've had, this is a very straightforward tree, um, we're not putting knots or anything complicated in it like that because I just wanted to show you the colour schemes that I, that I use. But I've seen people do bamboo, I've seen people do beech trees where it's a very, very detailed bark. But I wanted to kind of treat this as more of a beginner's group and not get anything... I mean, we can get into things that are technical later on, but just for this piece, I wanted you to, to be able to feel confident that you can do it. Back to the green orca. Much more firm of a hand. Still leaving myself that strip of light touch. Following that line round where the branch comes out. Being careful of this leaf here. And then just blending over that with the artichoke again. So you can see that they just start to melt into one another. And you can see that lovely sweep of where the branch is coming out. And it's quite interesting, you'll see when we get to the end how easy it is to make a bark effect. Just with literally uh, a black Prismacolor pencil. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, it can be any black pencil to be honest, it doesn't have to be a Prismacolor pencil, just a black pencil. You could probably even do it in HB pencil. So you can see I'm pressing a little bit harder there because there's more colour coming out on the page. Careful of a little flower pot down here. And I'm just going to go back with my artichoke and I'm pressing really hard now. I'm 
just where that colour melts. Just get that to melt away like that. Okay. So there you can see we're starting to get a really, really nice tree effect already. And you can see where the light's playing on it. So I can put my artichoke down now for a moment. I'm going to put that with the lime peel and I'm going to take my dark brown. Now this is where you're kind of going to need to take a deep breath because you're going to put a lot of dark pigment on the page. But don't panic because it's going to look good. Same principle. I'm going to mark myself out a little band. And what I think I'll do is, I don't think I... You know I will. I'm going to put a little strip of really dark colour in there. So dark brown and you yes you can see that because we're going into the crease of the page which I'll also show you how to handle and then what I'm going to do is I'm not going to curve this out as much because I'm getting to my two deepest colours I'm actually going to just put a tiny curve on like that because I do want this part larger in, in a deeper colour with it being further into the jungle floor it would be more in shadow so same principle Just a rough light going over with the dark brown. And try and make your um, pencil sweeps follow that line so you can see how I'm coming around the corner with it because it really will make a difference. All the way down. I'm sorry if this video is a little bit longer, but clearly with it being a larger area to cover, it's taking slightly longer to show you, but it will be worth it because I wanted to show you how the light plays around the corners as well as doing the full uh, length of the tree. There we go. Slightly like that. There we go. Same principle. I'm just going to do myself a little darker strip and go over the green ochre slightly. And you can see how nicely that colour of family of um, colours starts to work now. So I'm pressing harder. You can see I am. Still leaving myself a little strip there. Same principle. And I'm doing this a lot more quickly than I probably would. But you've, you're, you're, you'll be absolutely free to, to take your time over this. As I say, I'm just trying to show you the whole piece and be not have a massively long video. There we are. And I'm just going to take care around the little flower again. I think what I'll do is, for time's sake, you can see where I'm putting, which colour is where I'm putting it. I'll finish all of this off neatly after I finish the tutorial where it falls behind the flowers here. So I'm going to go back to my green ochre and where the dark brown meets the green ochre, I'm pressing hard. and just blending this line away here like you can see. see I'm just looking at the video of what you can see and it looks really nice it looks really nice I might just put a little bit of green ochre down there just to blend that out slightly just a very light touch just to get that variation in colour what does that look like yeah that's not too bad um, okay so I'm gonna put my green ochre down and I'm going to go for my darkest brown, which is sepia. And this is where the crease comes in. So I'm going to try and put it down like that. And this is where a, a nice sharp pencil comes in handy because you can get closer into the seam of the page. And again, I'm pressing quite lightly. Go 
following that sweep round. And I don't need to mark myself out where the sepia is going to be because clearly I've only got one shade left. Just doing that lightly up to that leaf. Curving strokes. Curving strokes. Hopefully you can see me colouring that in. Yes, you can. Difficult when it's in the crease. That's getting really brown now, really dark. Lovely tree colour. And clearly because this part of the tree is furthest away from the sunshine, it would be in a deeper shade. And then I'm just going to take that straight down this time because all of this, I want to be in this colour. Finish that off properly later on. Okay, I'm just gonna go over that a tiny bit more. Sweeping curves, sweeping curves. Now I'm gonna go back to my dark brown and just go over this slightly. And then my final thing will be to do the heavy hand of the very deep sepia colour and we will have a tree. Okay, back to the sepia. Pressing on quite heavily now. So just filling in that very last little bit. And again, because these pencils are so waxy, they blend beautifully. You don't have to even have to be that accurate, to be honest. Just go over this with the dark brown. Curving strokes. Curving strokes. Okay, so I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm going to leave that there and quickly show you how to do the bark effect. As I say, I will tidy this up later on. Um, so I'm going to take my black Prismacolor pencil. I want this really sharp because what we're going to do is very simply do that. Very light touch. I'm hardly pressing at all, but you can just about see that I'm making very fine lines. I'm trying to keep... Um, just going over onto his nose, so I'll wipe that out. I'm trying to keep the floor going down over so that it looks like the, the bark of the tree. But it can be pretty random and then you can be a little bit more random as you get into the darker colours because it won't show up as much. So follow my own advice, Claire. Sweeping across strokes. And you can just about see how that makes... If I zoom in, actually, I'll zoom in for that little bit. You can see, I think probably better there, how those fine strips of black um, make that lovely bark effect. The last, the very last thing I wanted to show you um, is, so sorry, yes, that's that's the tutorial for today. That's the tree. Um, again, any questions, just drop me a line. We'll be doing the old carpy um, tomorrow. But I just wanted to quickly show you something. Um, a lot of people have been asking me about um, waterfalls. And basically it's quite straightforward. So the, the, the colours and the technique were used for the ocean. So the same blue colours and the same blending technique can be used. I'm just going to show you. I'm going to flip the page on my book. I'm going to zoom out again. And I'm going to flip the page on my book so you can see this double page that I completed not so long ago. And you can see here the waterfall. And you can see here that I've got an ocean background in here as well. And basically the waterfall, if you just imagine, if I get my ruler, if you imagine the waterfall in two strips, can you see how I've done it? So the technique for the ocean, light to dark, light to dark, and then mirror opposite on the other side, light to dark, exactly the same technique, exactly the same colours. Um, so you don't have to have water flat it, that same technique and colours can be used to produce different water effects so I thought I'd quickly mention that to you 
back to our Oracarpy page. As I say, we'll be finishing him off tomorrow and I hope you join me. Bye for now, ladies.